Hi, we're Group B6. I'm Sean Dalesman, and I'm here with... I'm Jacqueline Miller. Um, and we're going to teach you about sets, unions, intersection, generalized union, and generalized intersection today. Okay, so first is about sets. A set is just an ordered collection of objects. There are certain ways to combine sets, which we call as set operations. And these sets can include unions, intersections, generalized inter intersections, and uh, generalized unions. Uh, a union is a set that contains elements that are in either sets. So it's basically a combination of the sets. Um, it uses a symbol that looks like a U. Um, and for example, if you have two sets, one set which is 1, 2, 3, and the other set which is 4, 5, 6, the union of the two sets are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, we also have an intersection, and an intersection is just a set um, containing elements that are both in A and B. It also it looks like an upside down V. So if there's a set that's 1, 2, 3, and a set that's 1, 4, 5, the only thing that they have in common is 1. So the intersection between those is just 1. Uh, we also have a principle called the principle of inclusion-exclusion. Um, and it's illustrated on the slides, as you can see, but it basically means there's no double counting when you uh, perform a union of two sets. Um, so, for example, if you have one set, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, and another set, which is 4, 5, 6, the number 4 isn't counted twice in the union of the two sets. It's only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have also something called a disjoint. So if two sets intersections are the empty set, they are disjointed. So um, an empty set is noted by the symbol on the screen. So if we have a set that's 1, 2, 3, and then another set that's 4, 5, 6, we see that there is nothing in common here. So it would be the result would be the empty set because they are disjoint. We also have the difference of two sets. So if we have set A and a set B, then the difference of A and B is a set that's contain containing the elements that are only in uh, that are in A but not in B. So we say that the difference of A and B is the complement of B with respect to A. So if we have set A which is 1, 2, 3 and set B which is 2, 3, 5, the difference between set A and set B would be the element uh, would be 1. We have something called generalized unions. So this is a union of collection of sets. Um, and it's a set that contains those elements that are members of at least one set in the collection. And the parentheses do not matter because of the set identities. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm not sure what to say here. OK, so let's. Um, do you want to finish generalized unions? And then and you do intersections? intersections. OK, so I'll see this one. Okay, so, um, let's see, oh, so I guess the any, okay, I can do it. So as we see here for the first part, any order, it's the same. So if we do A union, parentheses, B union, C, it's the same as joining A and B first with the union and then C. So for the union of sets, we denote it with a big U with a subscript and then A, which is the what the set is called with the subscript un underneath, um, which just combines all the different sets together. So for example, if we have A, which is 0, 2, 4, 6, and then set B, which is 0, 1, 3, 5, 7, and then one more set, C, which is 0, 1, 2, 3. It so we also have something called generalized intersections. And the intersection is a collection of set that contains all the elements that are members of all the sets in the collection. Um, and just like in generalized union, the parentheses do not matter because of set, set identities. So as you can see here, we have the intersection of A, of set A, set B, and set C, but we switch the parentheses around and they're the same just because of generalized intersection set identities. And just as with generalized uh, unions, we could uh, um, denote it with subscripts, we could do the same thing for intersections. So if we have three different sets as we have here, we could do it, uh, we could uh, do the intersection as before, 
as we did before and combine them into one generalized uh, intersection and we could get the set identity as being zero. Okay, so our first example is we have a set A that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then a set B that's 0, 3, 6, and the four questions are just for union, intersection, and the complement. So for the first one, A union B is just like we learned before, it's just the combination of all um, the elements, and we can see that even though A and B both have three in common, it's only mentioned once. For the second part, it's A intersection B, which is the element that they have in common, and like before, it's just the element three. Um, for the complement, this is what's in A minus B, so again, B and A have three in common, so we have to take that out, so then A is just one, two, four, and five. And then for B and minus A, we take what they have in common out, so it would just be 0 and 6. Um, just say that when you go through all the elements, like A of 1 is just 1, and then when you go to the next one, okay. A of 2 is 1 and 2. And if you keep on going, you'll see that they all just have at least 1, like the element 1 in common. Wait, where are we getting every integer n is at least 1 of the sets? Every integer n is at least one of the set. Um, I don't know, just Wouldn't the union, be... there's like a of one equals one. Oh, and, oh, no, 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 okay, so you can say, so the union, we can, you'd probably go before and say when you go through each thing, you get a of one equals one. A of 2 equals 1 and 2, A of 3 equals 1, 2, 3, you keep on going. But for the union, you don't count the elements that are the same. So if you combine 1 and then 1 and 2, you just say 1 and 2, you don't do like 1, 1 and 2. Okay. 